Hi, I'm Captain Larry Bell with Texas Fishing Tips, and this is your weekly fishing report. Up here in Sundown Bay, all this area up here along this back shoreline, main thing that you got to worry about up in these areas here, you know, you've got three or four back lake mouths that drop back off toward the uh, Randis Wildlife Refuge, all back in that area there, but there's some mouths that drop out in those, and there's are great areas to fish. Fish the corners, fish the guts, fish the edges. You can wade up into the guts if you so choose, but it gets awfully soft in those so those are things that you want to be aware of now you stay out in front of the mouth of those and fish the corners you got a little bit of scattered shell in some of those areas uh pay attention what your tides are doing you know we've had the last uh, i guess maybe the last week we've had some uh, lower tides than what we've had in a while so some of that water has dropped out so that's something that you really need to pay attention to especially if you don't have a really shallow running boat if you got a v-boat or something like that that has a little bit deeper draft then uh, this area here on certain tides would not work for you that far back in. Now, that said, you can get out on the edge of the ICW and fish that. You know, if you want to wade that area, it's very wadeable out there. It's got barge traffic that you need to uh, watch out for and take care of because that current can uh, change things a little bit. But there are some nice redfish that are cruising up and down this back shoreline. There are some scattered trout that are in this area, even uh, an occasional black drum uh, off this back uh, shoreline as well, around the mouse, up and down the shoreline. Find you some bait that's working up and down this area. There's a long, long, long area there in sundown. Lots of areas to fish, lots of opportunities in here. Uh, don't overlook an area just because it may not look fishy. Uh, this time of year, remember that our bait is much more scarce. We don't have as much in the system right now because a lot of it's migrated out. But when you do find that bait, throw at it. Throw in behind it. Throw your baits in there behind it. Now, the baits has been uh, been my primarily go-to here for a little bit. Uh, probably the last couple of weeks has been uh, Chicken of the Sea. Uh, it's been a burner shad in that color. Uh, the Supernatural has been good because our water clarity has been uh, pretty clear for the most part. So translucent baits have been good. Uh, your uh, Little Johns in red and glow gold glitter have been productive as well, especially for the uh, black drum. They will eat that. Uh, the supermodels for down south have been pretty good as well in both uh, burner shad, I mean the uh, uh, chicken of the sea and uh, magic grass. Both of those have been good. Of course, those are my main go-tos the large majority of the time. Your corkies, both the original and uh, fat boy in the sinkers have been good. Now, if you get, if you're really proficient with those particular baits, you can really do some have some really good productive days with those because they've been really productive, especially over grass flats, grass areas, pockets, edges. Again, work these areas back in here, incorporate your major and minor into your day, and uh, you'll have a pretty good day. Up here on Shell Point, all the way around this little bowl, all the way down toward Turtle Pen, this area here along this back edge, pay attention to what your wind's doing. Great setup for a south-southeast breeze or maybe even a southwest breeze because it's blowing right into these little back lake areas and right along the shoreline here. There's been some redfish that's been cruising up and down in this area in the mouth of those. But again, pay attention to what your bait's doing because we don't have, again, we don't have a lot of bait that's working into the system. So when you start throwing artificials this time of year, you, be, you become top of the food chain there because they're going to start really targeting your artificial baits because there's not a lot of bait that's in here. So when you find a little bit of bait working it, be patient with it. Stay in there with it. Work your down south. Work your soft dines. Work your double Ds. Work your uh, floaters in your fat boys and the original Paul Browns. Uh, the original Paul Browns for me have been really good because you can really work that bait over the top of some of those grass flats and it's got that real slow descent and you can really work that bait over the top of that. So if you take your time with it and if you're not really proficient with it, Spend some time working one of those things in there and you really get to used to it, how it works and how it glides and slides and wobbles down in those holes and it gives you opportunities. Maybe that a plastic or a suspended bait, maybe not like a soft dine or something like that or a double D would give you because it gives you a little bit bigger profile and sometimes these fish want something just a little bit different. But that said, these areas all along here have been working all this, this muddy little sh uh, scattered shell that's in here, these back lake mouths that come up into this point have been good. They've been productive consistently. Uh, the majors and minors have been the, my key focal point on that when I'm working these areas. Not necessarily any other time frame, but just in and around those time frames, it's been most productive. Get on this point and get back around in here to turtle pin. You've got a nice uh, 
a little bit muddier area back down on this side it can be a little bit sticky so if you're not used to working in some real deep mud then you might want to avoid that and get a little closer over here toward this back shoreline big nice grass flat that's back up on top of that uh, again the paul brown original have been good uh, down south chicken of the sea magic grass and both the supermodels and now in the burner shads have been good too depending on what your moon phase is so we're transitioning toward a full moon so that's something you again you want to consider you want to start looking at maybe downsizing your baits soft dines burners originals of the down south in it, any of those colors that you want as long as you got you know rule of thumb dark water dark baits clear water clear baits just remember that that's just basis for you to use that use that information to your your uh, advantage work this big grass flat out here on the edges uh, depending on what the tide is what the water's doing uh, this area back in here can really uh, lend itself to have some fish hanging off those edges. They like that kind of stuff. And then, of course, you've got this big gut that's back here on the back side of that, full of mud, full of area back in there. Been redfish kind of working in and out of that. Uh, flounder season's back open again. We've caught a few flounder that's been laid back in there. Uh, those were by accident, not on purpose, but we have caught some that were back in these areas here. So when you're working all this area back in here, just take all that into consideration. Just kind of mesh all that information together. To kind of formulate you a game plan uh, this time of year you kind of need that because the weather can be pretty volatile it can change on you from time to time we've had you know fog in the area we've had high winds we've had low winds no winds lower tides higher tides so everything's been kind of filtered in there so you want to have a a uh, bunch of different op options to throw in these areas to work these fish uh, that said again just pay attention to what you're doing back in these areas here it's a great fishing area incorporate your majors and minors again uh, start with a, a bigger bait profile and work down to a smaller profile bait or vice versa whatever you want to do again based on what the moon's doing and uh, you'll find some fish that are working all back in these areas down here in spalding you've heard me talk about spalding in the back lakes of these drains and these mouths and all these areas back it's one of my favorite areas to fish back up here especially when the water levels do drop out like we've had the last oh i guess maybe week week and a half we've had much lower tides than what we've been having all these areas back in here, much weightable. You can weight them all. You can get back in there. Some of them a little probably, you might get into some calf deep mud in some of these areas, but you can deal with it. If you're if you're used to weighting and weighting in that kind of stuff, because that's the kind of things that you want to target this time of year, mud, grass, scattered shell. All these areas, these mouths that are down in here, from where I started that yellow line where to where I'm going to end this yellow line, all those areas lend that to you. You have big areas of opportunity in here, especially when the, when the water's lower, then you can fish out away from these mouths and get back out here on the big flat that's out there in uh, Spalding because that's, all that water opens up and becomes super weightable for you. And there's lots of scattered shell that's out there and there's good mud that's out there and there's good scattered. We've had deep grass pockets that are in there as well that have come really good and productive. Uh, one thing if you are not aware of, the uh, oyster harvest has stopped in Aransas Bay, so that's that's good news for fishing areas up in here so you're not going to have all the oyster boats tearing all that stuff up and dirtying up the water so our water clarity ought to be much better now for for moving forward into the springtime uh, again 16th ounce jig heads uh, paul browns floaters sinkers you can work all that kind of stuff in here if you like to throw those you know i like to start with the plastic and then transition over to the paul brown either the original or the floater either one especially if the fish are dictating that's what they want a little bit bigger profile Water temp. Make sure you pay attention to that. If you're, uh, if you don't have something with a uh, on your GPS that has a transducer with water temperature on it, get you some type of pool thermometer that you can put in your pocket and use that. Water temperature this time of year is a big deal. So if you have, you know, one or two degree difference in some of these areas, those fish are going to find it and they're going to transition to it and they're going to want to be in that area. And also the thing that's going to happen too is you're going to find a little bit more bait work in those areas, which are going to bring those predator fish to you. So keep that into mind when you're fishing these a uh, little bit deeper areas, more wide open areas down in here. Uh, this area sets up really good for a north, northeast wind. You can fish it really well. You can fish down the, if you've got south, southeast breeze, you can fish the other shoreline across the way. It sets up as you go into it. Depending on what the tide is, you know, if these tides are up, get back in those back lakes and work those back lakes. The grass over there, work top water bait in there. Again, you can work the floaters back in there because they act like a little bit of subsurface top water bait and they do really well over the top of that grass because your big grass pockets are all in there. Same up there at Jaybird, Sherman's Back Lake, all that area in there is really good as well. 
Uh, you can transition this down all the way to the point as you come toward the fingers of Carlos. All that's going to settle down there as well. So you'll fish those guts up in there if you'd like. Uh, throw your down south in there. Throw the supermodel. Throw the regular the chicken of the sea. Magic grass, always my two go-tos. Uh, bone diamond and white ice have been good as well. Uh, the uh, new new flavor that uh, down south came out with is, is uh, vapor. It's been a really productive color as well in this water up here. So you work those guts, work those edges out there a little bit deeper. You'll find some little bit of bait working in there. Be, be patient with it. Throw your soft dines in here, suspended baits in this. All this area in here becomes really productive when you got a little bit of bait working. Maybe not so much high winds because the high winds will, or it's in a wide open area though, so it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to fish that. You can regress back into the end of spalding area so you can find that that protection that you need. But keep all that stuff in mind this time of year because our, our weather does change quite a bit and, and frequently. Uh, so continue to work these. Again, majors and minors this time of year become very important to pay attention to. Your artificials are great baits this time of year and they become high on the chain to, uh, to find your bait or find your fish up in these areas. Thanks for watching. I'm Captain Larry Bell.